Ukrainian armed forces showed the results of the ongoing shelling by the Russian army in the Kursk region, the targets of which were residential areas. Russians are burning Russian houses, emphasized a Ukrainian soldier who filmed the burning area on video. A video of Russian soldiers destroying the homes of their own citizens was published on the Korn Group Telegram channel. Recall at least a dozen clips show how the Russian civilian population left behind in the territory now under Ukrainian control live now and how much they depend on the Ukrainian soldiers. Residents of Sudza complain that they have not been evacuated by the Russian military and are even being exposed to their strikes as seen in this geo-located footage from the local ice hockey stadium showing the devastation caused by a Russian air bomb. Recent footage highlights Ukrainian soldiers delivering humanitarian aid to Russian civilians and how a local woman warmly greets the Ukrainian soldiers, offering blessings and expressing gratitude for their assistance. The humane treatment demonstrated by the Ukrainian army has even led one woman to declare on camera that such is Ukraine. This series of interactions vividly illustrates the significant difference in how Ukrainian and Russian soldiers conduct themselves when entering foreign territory with the Ukrainians fostering goodwill and support among the local population. Simultaneously, Russian soldiers released several frustrated videos addressing the male population of the Kursk Oblast, criticizing them for fleeing the war rather than staying to defend their homeland. They urged the men to either take up arms or, at the very least, dig trenches and provide their vehicles to support the soldiers risking their lives in defense of Kursk. However, the local population remains skeptical of these military appeals and prefers to evacuate the danger zone as quickly as possible, a sentiment deepened by the actions of Russian forces themselves. Let us recall that this is not the first time that the occupiers have attacked their own homes, but even aircraft. As reported on September the 12th, a light aircraft was shot down in the Mamansk region, which the Russian military mistook for a Ukrainian armed forces UAV. As noted, the two light sport aircraft, ATEK-321, Fleta NG and BRM Aero Bristel NG-5, took off from the landing site in the Apartity Municipal District to Arkhangelsk. Half an hour later, the region lifted airspace restrictions that had been imposed due to the UAV attack. Apparently, not everyone got the drone attack warning. After takeoff, the pilot of one of the planes saw that the other plane was behaving strangely. He raised an alarm signal. It turned out that the other plane had been fired upon with small arms. After the shooting, the pilots of both planes requested a change in the flight plan. The first decided to land at the Apatiti airfield and the second returned to the place of departure. Their flight lasted about 20 minutes. After the landing, it became known that the bullet had pierced the wing and headlights of the plane. Earlier on August the 20th, it was reported that four drunken Russian soldiers shot at a civilian car in the Kursk region. The death toll in the aftermath of a typhoon in Vietnam climbed to 233 on Friday as rescue workers recovered more bodies from areas hit by landslides and flash floods, state media reported. Flood waters from the swollen Red River in the capital, Hanoi, were beginning to recede somewhat, but many neighborhoods remained inundated, and farther north experts were predicting it could still be days before any relief was in sight. Typhoon Yagi made landfall Saturday, starting a week of heavy rains that have triggered flash floods and landslides, particularly in Vietnam's mountainous north. Across Vietnam, 103 people are still listed as missing and more than 800 have been injured. The United Nations Children's Agency, UNICEF, said the storm and its aftermath has also damaged some 550 health facilities, 800 schools and more than 100,000 homes, while leaving more than 3 million people with no access to safe drinking water. It said it is working with the government and other partners to deliver bottled water, purification tablets, filtration systems and other emergency aid to the area's hardest hit.